do you sometimes feel like you forgot where you put yourself under all the noise and overwhelm of life and the pressure? And do you sometimes scold yourself like, like a frustrated babysitter scolding a problem child instead of treating yourself like a genuine friend and ally? If that has been the case, then you're gonna love this interview with Chris Kisling, my guest today. Let me read you Chris's bio and then I'm gonna bring him on. Chris Kisling is a life coach and he helps people who feel like they've lost the plot of their own lives beneath the conflicting messages, demands, responsibilities, uncertainties, and the wounds, the old and new wounds of our busy existence. Chris helps his clients to reconnect and live from their deepest desires and aspirations, what he calls your still point. His own path took him from a career as an executive for a national consulting firm, earning six figures and managing a high performance team on a daily diet of adrenaline and stress to his current love, which is sitting across from one beautiful soul at a time, helping them to see, to connect with, to fall back in love with themselves, to fall back in love with yourself. Chris believes that each of us is on a sacred quest, whether we recognize it or not. And without exception, our lives are worthy of attention, appreciation, and compassion. Chris, welcome to our interview today. Thanks for being here. Hey, George. I'm really glad to be here. So I'm going to be sure that people have access to your website. Uh, there will be a link, those of you who are looking for it. There's a link to Chris's website and also Facebook page. And also he wrote an article for Elephant's Journal that was an editor's pick. And I'll put the link to that as well. So Chris, you have a couple of things to share with us today. And um, I'll just let you go ahead and, and share that. And I might chime in with, with a comment or question or something. Okay. Well, um, Again, thanks for having me on. I'm just uh, so thrilled to be talking to you and to the folks who are watching this. Um, first, just a, a little bit about uh, my business. My, my company is called Still Point Enterprises, and that comes from, uh, actually the inspiration for that was one of my favorite poems by T.S. Eliot, um, Four Quartets. And he talks about... Um, being a still point in the turning world. And that for me is kind of a metaphor for what I choose to be uh, in my life. And what other people have reflected back to me that they are They're like, wow, you're like this like spot of calm in all the stuff that's going on. But what's really cool about that, it, uh, Elliot goes on to say, um, except for the point, the still point, there would be no dance and there is only the dance. So even though I'm, I'm in love with this concept of the still point, it's really not the point. The point is the dance. And to the extent that the accessing that, that place of quiet confidence and knowledge and self-appreciation and compassion allows you the freedom to move into the dance. That's, that's what the game's all about. So. I love that. I love that idea. Uh, and it's, kind of integrating a, a duality of life, which is that there's both rest and, and confidence and groundedness, uh, and there's movement and progress and sort of uncertainty and all that stuff. And as a coach, you are somebody who kind of helps people grapple with that, right? Yeah. Right, because we're not these, we aren't these fixed entities. We're actually unfolding processes. Um, throughout the course of our lives and just in the course of a day you you may go from one extreme to another you might show up um, depending on the circumstances um, with very different kinds of energy and they can all be you um, there is a there is a kernel a thread a pattern that runs through all of them but um, in some way I think of our my clients and myself as these marvelous vessels these containers under which all this different kinds of alchemy and magic can unfold so there's this idea that you share with clients um, called timeless moments. 
Uh, tell us what that means. Yeah, that's um, that's actually a really simple, um, actually kind of journaling strategy that I use with a lot of clients to, when we're trying to develop a, a direction, especially early on in the engagement, um, asking them to do a life review and reflect back over their lives and identify when were those, what were those timeless moments, those moments when I felt just most in touch with the person that I want to be. I felt most in flow, um, using my gifts, um, in sync with whatever I conceive the, the world and whatever may lie beyond it, um, really at my best. And, and so I have my, my clients reflect over their lives, identify those, and then journal about each one of those um, so that they can identify um, you know, what was going on, what was I doing, who was I with, uh, where was I, what was the setting. And then we look at that. Uh, we look at all of them for clues, uh, commonalities, um, so that we can start crafting a vision for, okay, if this is what has really um, given me mojo in the past, what are the clues there that'll tell us where to look in the future? And uh, I was thinking um, this morning of a client that uh, when he came to me, he was actually a high school student and he, he was a, um, a loner and he was okay with that. He was, um, he might've even been on the spectrum uh, a bit. He, he was like very, um, very attached to the things that he liked to do and spent a lot of time alone and, and said that he was fine with that. But we did that exercise, and as we went through all of the different examples, every single one, he was in relationship with other people. He was cooperating with them or doing something for them or receiving something from them, creating something with them. And so we had to have a little talk after that and say, you know, if, this, if these are the high points of your life and you want more points like this, wouldn't it make sense to try to get more comfortable <laughs> being around other people and to, to kind of get over those barriers so that you don't have this, this resistance, this hump to doing that so that you can have more of that in your life. And then that became like kind of an aha and a, a, a guidepost and a motivation for him to start doing the stretch. And so we did that, but on the other side too, like um, you can't just do things on a conceptual level. So with him, it also had to be some practical pushing so, um, so one thing I did with him, he, he, uh, he had an assignment, he wanted to get in shape. So he had to go to the gym and, um, he would go every day, but he would go make a beeline to the treadmills cause they were in the back and he could get on there without talking to anybody and just, uh, do his thing and then leave. And I said, well, what about the other stuff? And he said, well, I, I would have to go like, I don't know how to use them. And I would have to go ask somebody for help. And it would just be. I don't want to be that pain in the ass. And so he committed to doing it for homework. He came in, he hadn't done it. So I said, all right, that's it. Let's go. And we went out, jumped in the car and we drove to, I think three different gyms within a couple miles of my house. And he had to walk into each one and request a tour. And, uh, and when he came out, even, even when he came out of the first one, he's like, wow, that, that wasn't so hard. They seemed like really happy to help me. And so, but he had this concept of um, that he was a pain in the ass and that, that, um, that was getting in his way. So. Wow. Um, tell me what kind of clients you work with. Uh, so you've got this, this example. Um, I imagine you work with clients of different age, ages and different professions. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm working, uh, I'm, I'm working with one who's a, a CEO in charge of several hundred people, um, and multi-million dollar budget. Um, I, I've worked with, uh, really across the age range. I've, I've worked with, um, college students, um, people outside of college struggling to find their way, um, grieving widows, um, people confused about uh, their sexuality, like they're not sure they've received all of these messages and they've grown up in certain cultural contexts and they're trying to figure out what their way is. So it, it really, 
Um, I haven't been able to define my niche so far beyond lost people who especially are struggling to find their own way in the face of all of the messages they're getting um, around them. I was thinking about another client today who um, he had dropped out of college and he was facing several different possibilities. The, his old job was offering him this potentially really lucrative um, sales position. Um, and he, his father was a really successful businessman and had definite ideas about what he should be doing. And his mother, they were divorced, but his mother had very strong opinions about what he should be doing. And, and in the meantime, he was a, uh, a part-time waiter at a restaurant and living in an apartment without a couch. And <laughs> I'm convinced the first thing that I did was um, tell him the best thing I did <laughs> at the beginning was tell him, you, can, you cannot come back here until you have a couch in your living room. Like, you just have to do that. That's your homework. And he did. And suddenly he had this big metaphor that, wow, I can do like adult things. Now I have a place where people can visit me and sit. And it's like, whoa, kind of really kind of helped shift his self-concept. But we, um, we did a kind of a spoken version of that, um, the timeless moments. And I asked him for, okay, when was a moment when you were really alive? And he talked about, he said it was, Every once in a while, they let me run the front of the house at the restaurant. And he said, I love it. He said, like, I feel like the ringmaster. There are all these people coming in and they're having all kinds of experiences. And it might be like super special moments in their lives. And I'm making that happen. I'm the person who's um, kind of like the puppet master and making everything happen. He said, I think I'd really like to own a restaurant at some point in my life. And so we talked some more and it turned out the restaurant he was in was super... Um, nurturing of their employees and really receptive to people who wanted to take on more responsibility. And I just told him, I said, you know, that is the only time in this session of all the possibilities you've talked about where you really lit up and you don't need to go to college. You're in college. Like this is the place. So for him, this big shift was finding out that he was already right where he needed to be and, and embracing that. And so we made a commitment that he was going to become a sponge and ask for all the, um, the training he could and become indispensable mm -hmm. volunteer. And I think within six months, he was assistant manager. Within a year, he was manager of the restaurant. And then they built a new restaurant and just put him in charge of it. That was his. Wow. That's awesome. Um, what you just said, you, you helped him you know, with this timeless moments exercise. You helped him do that in real time and i'm wondering is that something you you work with clients on because i i can imagine uh it might be hard for some people like myself to remember those moments to journal about it and having somebody like you kind of pull that out would be really helpful yeah yeah and yeah because I, I have to look my my clients come to me with people have different modalities that work better for them and some people uh, they frankly have some trauma around writing i'm an english major by training. And so I, I love that stuff. But, um, so, um, it might involve a discussion. It might involve putting them in like a slight meditative state and seeing what comes, uh, what bubbles up from there. But, um, we've all, we've all got those, those moments and just by paying really close attention and responding to the cues in the moment, um, we can bring them out. And they really do serve as guideposts yeah, because they're ours. Yeah, absolutely. I can see why those are so important to, to study. Yeah. yeah. And you have another exercise called um, the eternal return. That's cool. And what, tell me about that. Yeah, the, the eternal return. These are those, those issues that just keep coming back for us. Um, mm -hmm. And we all have one or two. Um, uh, one of my teachers used to call them are unanswerable questions. Like no matter how much time and effort and information we throw at them, they're just still up for us all the time. It might be some need that we can't get met no matter how much people support us and talk to us about it. We still feel this, this particular ache. And it's really, I think, useful first to identify them, but then to understand that, um, 
the thing that is actually holding that issue in place might be beneath it. And so what we do, we tend to do is like keep working on the issue where in fact there might be a supporting construct or concept or experience that is keeping it locked into place. And that's where you need to work first in order to get some leverage on this. So that's, that's a little abstract, but I, I can give you an example from my own life. Um, one of my unanswerable questions, my, uh, from going way back <laughs> is, do I belong? And they tend to, to be questions like, do I belong? Um, am I enough? Uh, when will you leave? Uh, just depending on, we, we've been shaped by our experiences and our lives kind of coalesce around these ongoing concerns. And um, so for me, it was like, do I belong? And in every context, I would be asking that and being paying close attention. Like, oh, here's this group of people that I kind of like, but they all seem to like belong to each other in a way that I don't. And it probably goes back in part two, growing up as a, a gay man in a, a, a strong Catholic Republican military environment <laughs> and feeling kind of like an outsider there. Um, but when I did some, some gentle inquiry around it, uh, in some ways it's all akin to a, a less formulaic version of Byron Katie's the work, the deconstruction. I realized that underneath that was this concept of consensus. Like I, when I would walk into a room, I would size it up as me and everyone else. And I would kind of like make them this homogenous whole and assume that they knew something about each other and they all knew something about me. And one thing they knew was that I didn't get the same instruction manual that they did. And so just like, even before I walked into a room, that was the way the board was set up in my mind. So I had to look at, the, the rules of the board, but instead of just the situation, like each situation. And so as soon as I started picking that apart and realizing there actually is no such thing as consensus about me, that they are not this homogenous whole, they are actually all individuals. And so I had to make it a practice when I walked into a room to look around at individual people one at a time and see them and see how they were interacting and realizing that they weren't just part of this monolithic whole, but they were actually just individuals. And they were, sometimes they seemed happy, sometimes they seemed connected, sometimes they seemed in a mood. They were just like me. And, um, and so by doing that, I kind of was able to dissolve that construct that was keeping me isolated. It still comes up for me. The other night I was in a, I was in a bar and I was sitting with a group that knew each other really well. And I was kind of a relative newcomer. And I decided rather than settling back into my old story, I leaned forward and started connecting with each one of them individually. And I just, I had the best time at the end and we were all hugging, everything was great. That, that never would have happened <laughs> a couple of decades ago. Wow. And that's, that's the kind of stuff I like to do you know, with my clients, identify those situations where these things come alive. And then what kind of an, an experience or experiment or homework can we improvise around that? Yeah. It's brilliant. Great example. And uh, yeah, those questions, uh, that's a fascinating one. Cause I think, yes, we all have something. Sometimes it's, you know, we share some of those unanswerable questions with others, but sometimes it's uh, feels unique uh, and always feels unique. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so, how do you so say more about how if somebody's watching this and they resonate with your energy, they like to be in a session with you. Um, what's the next step? How, how, how does somebody move forward to work with you? Well, I would recommend um, that they go to my website uh, and it's findyourstillpoint.com and it'll be in the links um, and just have a look around. I, I really poured myself into that. And so it has a lot of how I feel about, these things the way I look the particular way I look at life and if that speaks to you then there's a contact page with a really short form just click on there and I'll get right back to you and we'll schedule a conversation just uh, I'm not into high pressure sales or anything I just want to we'll have a gentle conversation and see if we seem like a good fit and sometimes we do and there are other times um, I've gone to somebody and said you know you really don't need me you need somebody like this and then I'll recommend somebody else um, the important thing is that you get support, whoever that is. And if, and 
if you are, anytime you are inspired to take action and reach out to me, I know that like, okay, the iron is hot. It's important to strike now. And so if I'm not the right one, I still want to help push you towards resources because we only wake up every once in a while and get the courage to, to reach out and take that kind of action because it's, you know, it is vulnerable. It's like admitting that I need some help. I, I don't have all the answers. Yeah. And by the way, I don't either. Right. But, yeah. but I found yeah. that like two of us, um, two minds working on a problem can uh, be a lot more creative and have a lot more space um, than just one person being alone. Absolutely. Yeah. I think of coaching, which is what you do as a partnership for the client's um, progress and kind of stepping into potential, greater potential and optimizing their life, making it even better um, than, than somehow, you know, the coach has all the answers. And in fact, it's so, so funny you say it because just yesterday I was um, uh, talking to a potential coach because I use coaches myself. Mm -hmm. And what worried me was when he said, I know I have all the answers that you need. I know that I can get you exactly to where you need to go. I'm like, wow, really? We've been talking for 10 minutes. <laughs> you like, barely know anything about me and you know exactly where I need to go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think people who know uh, how, how life really, you know, journey, how we really develop understanding. It's like, oh, there's a lot more there than, mm -hmm. than meets the eye. So, but thank you. Thank you for, um, uh, anyway, thank you for being here in this conversation and kind of for doing the work that you do. Um, so as we complete, is there anything else you want to say to, to those who are watching? Um, no, just, um, I, uh, I hope that you will, um, take exquisite care of yourself. And if you're, if you are struggling that you will reach out, if not to me, to somebody, um, to, to get the support that you need. And also if you mentioned earlier, the, the link to the elephant journal article, that was about a series of extraordinary events that led me into this work. Um, I call it the night the owl called my name. And uh, if, if you are interested in the way that signs and synchronicities work in people's lives, I encourage you to go there and check it out. And uh, yeah, it was pretty extraordinary. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I, I, I'm going to go read it myself too. So Chris, thank you so much for, uh, for being here today. And I hope those who are watching will um, reach out to you and click on the links in the notes of the video. Uh, your website, once again, is find www.findyourstillpoint.com. Findyourstillpoint.com. Yeah, all one thank word. Thank you so much, Chris. All one word. Thanks, Chris. Thanks so much, George.